You know, I'm already pretty confident that Florida Gators passing attack is going to improve in 2023 over 2022, but I'm going to tell you how they do that here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We're available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Monday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon Rittenwork with whole nine sports, Giants, Country, and NFL 33. And now I'm going to tell you because I feel like we've gone through this quite a bit of, yeah, Graham Mertz isn't just like Anthony Richardson, obviously. He doesn't bring everything to the table that Anthony Richardson does, but he does bring some different things. And I know how the Florida Gators can improve that passing attack with Graham Mertz, assuming he's a starting quarterback, or even Jack Miller can do this, or even Max Brown could do this, since we're having that discussion at certain points this offseason. But I think for the Florida Gators, the main key is getting tight ends involved. And I mean, if, if we're talking about Graham Mertz, which just for, for the sake of this show, we're talking about Graham Mertz. OK, that's just how we're doing it now. If we're talking about Graham Mertz, Graham Mertz is, you know, he said, I love targeting Jake Ferguson at Wisconsin. He, he proved that by consistently targeting him in the passing game. And I mean, involving the tight end in the passing game is something that I feel like I consistently complained about last season. For the Florida Gators, it just wasn't something Anthony Richardson did frequently. There are quarterbacks that do that, by the way. Russell Wilson doesn't use tight ends in the passing game a ton. That's not what he does a lot. So there there are quarterbacks who can get the job done and just tend to not use quarter and not use tight ends frequently in the passing game, which is fine. That's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. But in this case, for the Florida Gators, you should add your tight ends into the passing attack. First off, I do think having Russ Calloway as the new tight ends coach is going to help get these tight ends involved in the passing game. Of course, he's a quarterback coach, offensive coordinator, wide receivers coach. So it makes sense that having that as your tight ends coach, you're probably going to see improved uh, pass catching production from your tight end room. That makes sense, right? That, That just flows evenly. So that should be the expectation. But also... Looking at the personnel that you have, let's not even talk about the scheme stuff that you can actually do with running crossers and that boot slide that I love that we didn't really see, but we did see in the spring game last year. Hopefully we see it this year in game, but just talking about the personnel that you'll have. Keon Zipper, I mean, I I know that he said he's going to miss this year. 2024 is his bounce back year. We'll see if he's really out for the year. I know that he had surgery. We don't know exactly what happened yet. But if he can make it back this year, big if and most likely not happening, he should be involved in the passing attack. Like he pretty consistently pops as both a route runner and as a yards after catch guy, which I know we could talk about the Tennessee game, that insane yards after catch opportunity that he created. We could talk about his size, how maybe that limits him as a pass catcher. I don't care, quite frankly. Um, I I don't care about that size potentially limiting him as a pass catcher because he's proven that he can make do with what he's got. So I'm fine with it. So Zip probably out, but if he is able to get back for this season, even maybe it's the second half of the season, he should be involved. Dante Sanders, the other starting tight end on this roster, down 21 pounds. Before last season, he lost, I think it was 19 pounds. Then going into this season, he's lost 21 pounds, or he's listed 21 pounds lighter than he was listed last year. So he's down 21 pounds. He's got another year under his belt as a tight end now, because I know he flipped from tight end to DN to tight end. Now he's back to tight end, staying there. And he's got a full year under his belt now under William Peekler. And then now he's got this spring and the summer under Russ Calloway. But him losing 40 pounds 
over the past two seasons should kind of tell you, okay, he's ready to move. Like, like losing 40 pounds, losing 21 pounds, you should be at least quicker. Maybe not faster. I don't want to, I don't want to say that you have to be faster, but you should at the very least be quicker than you were last year, right? That should help him get open a ton because he was just a stiff runner last year. So hopefully losing those 21 pounds, he'll be a little more agile and a little better at running his routes this year. Also his last season of eligibility. So he's got a ball out for an NFL opportunity because we know he can do the blocking part fairly well. We need to see him as a pass catcher because he can't be a one trick pony at the next level. But also onto that, the guy who's been popping in spring, the guy who's listed as unguardable, the guy that we've all loved and that I hate that so many people have been like, oh, Kyle Pitts, because he's a wide receiver tight end hybrid, Arliss Boardingham. And let me make this one pretty clear. He is not a Kyle Pitts, hybrid, Kyle Pitts type of tight end wide receiver. That's not what he does. He's not insanely tall. He's not insanely mobile he's he doesn't move like a wide receiver really he moves like like a power like he doesn't move like kyle pitts moves no arliss boardingham is more of like a, a power slot big slot kind of receiver where i've said he's more similar to travis kelsey in terms of just what he does stylistically i don't know about you I'm cool having someone that is stylistically similar to our, to uh, Travis Kelsey in Arliss Boardingham. So he should be involved in the passing attack. He should have been involved in the passing attack, whether or not Keon Zipperer got injured. But since that injury, since that injury, you've got to get him involved in the passing attack. Like he has to be a major part. And then also Jonathan Odom should not be slept on. Jonathan Odom was very spotty. He's been inconsistent where he's shown flashes throughout his career and then he, he deals with injuries. That's been his thing. It's not even that he's flashing in the sense of, oh, he's going ghost at this point, and oh, he's coming back at this point. No, he just he gets injured at certain points, and that is something where if he can stay healthy, he's probably going to be pretty freaking involved in this offense because he is, I believe, the best run-blocking tight end on this team or the best blocking tight end on this team regardless, and he is an underrated pass catcher that should be involved, especially with a quarterback who wants to target your tight ends. But there's another thing that we spoke about last year that was a huge part of the passing attack and should be this year as well. But first, today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by Built Bar. Dude, it's almost April. I don't know what to tell you. We're a couple of days away from April, which means we're getting really, really close to nice weather, which is beach weather, pool weather, vacation weather summertime that's all it means it's summer weather and if you're trying to get that summer bod ready you have to add built bar into your plan most bars have just 130 calories four net carbs 17 grams of protein and they're all coated in this delicious 100 chocolate chocolate they're amazing i love them also they're finally in store so go to built or builtbar.com go to your local walmart or sam's club and get yourself that built bar Thanks again for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. And I mentioned, you know, there's something that we talked about last year a lot. And Florida Gators fans, maybe a few of us went too in-depth with it as far as what level it should be involved in. But play-action passing. Florida last year was somewhat inconsistent with the frequency or the situations in which they'd call play-action passing. Here's my thing. You can always call play action pass. Okay? Like you can always run play action. Run that play fake all you want. Okay? And I need to make that clear. And here's another thing that I want to talk about because we're going to get into the conversation of okay, this team's pass catching unit is improved but not great. This team's offensive line is almost definitely going to be worse than it was last year. Maybe the run game takes a step back. Maybe it does. That's something we should probably discuss as a possibility because especially someone like Montreal Johnson who tends to really pick up steam and that's when he starts plowing through defenders. If he's hit in the backfield, he's not going to be able to pick up that steam as easily and it might be difficult to run the ball. So the, passing, the running game might fall back a little bit. 
you do not need to have a running game that is thriving in order to successfully run play action passes. I need that to be abundantly clear. Whether or not you want to say how you feel about it doesn't matter to me. Because statistically, it is proven that play action passing improves your passing game. Okay, so that's all I'm saying on that, where whether or not your team is good at running the ball doesn't matter. Run play action, okay? But if your team is running the ball, play action is way more lethal. If your team can run the ball successfully, your play action passing attack becomes that much more dangerous. And so when you have Montreal Johnson, when you have Trevor Etienne, when you run those jet sweeps across the middle or, or those sweep motions, jet motions across the middle, and you fake it, that improves your passing attack. It's a simple thing where you just go, all we need to do when we're running passing plays most of the time is play action. That's it. You just have to add that in. We need to get out of this mindset of your running game needs to be working. You need to have fast receivers that get deep downfield. You need to be able to do this or do that. No, if you run the play action, your team will be better for it. Okay? Wisconsin last season did not go play action very often. But when they did, Graham Mertz was a top 15 play action passer in the country. Okay? Anthony Richardson was fifth. But Graham Mertz was top 15 in the country on play action passing. Okay. Just by grade wise, because obviously he didn't do it a lot. I think it was 8% of their plays, if I'm not mistaken. That number's just off the top of my head at this point. I think it was 60% of the time they threw the ball. 20% of their passes were play action. And that equals 8%. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's, that's how it went. But either way, that's not the important part. The important part is that Graham Mertz found success when operating out of play action last year. Whether or not it was something he was asked to do often doesn't matter because he had, I think it was 57 pass attempts from play action, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 10 yards per attempt. Would anybody turn down 10 yards per attempt and a touchdown every, what, 12 or 13 pass attempts? I, I sure as heck wouldn't. So I, I think that for most of us, we can agree. Play action, good. Also, Graham Mertz showed something at Wisconsin that he was comfortable working play action from both or as both shot plays where a shot play obviously is play action and you're letting someone go deep and your goal is to throw that deep ball. He showed that he's comfortable doing that. He also showed he's comfortable, one, going through progressions after play action, two, throwing that shot play, Three, throwing underneath, and four, throwing the ball away. I realize it's weird to say, oh, throwing the ball away. That's successful. It is, because it ain't a win, but it ain't a loss. You lose the down, you don't lose yards, you don't risk a turnover. Throwing the football away is one of the most underappreciated aspects of playing quarterback. But don't worry, baby. Here, here we care about it. Here we appreciate it. That's something we do with Locked On Gators. Because guess what? I've been evaluating. I've been evaluating draft prospects longer than I've been covering Florida. And one thing with a quarterback that I will always love is a quarterback that will throw the ball away if that's the right decision. So we love it. Graham Mertz. I, I, I hope that Billy Napier lets you go play action like half of your pass attempts. I really do. But there's one more thing Graham Mertz loved doing at Wisconsin that he's probably going to love doing in Gainesville too. And it will improve the passing attack from last year. I know that for a fact. I'm going to tell you what it is in one second. But first, today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by FanDuel. March Madness is wrapping up. We got another weekend. We got what, like nine games left for most NBA teams? We're in the thick of things right now. The MLB is about to kick off. It, it's it's crazy time here. 
but it's also crazy money making time. Now is the time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers, guess what you get? A no sweat first bet of up to one thousand dollars. That is up to one thousand dollars of bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Money making machine here. I'm telling you, don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets back if your first bet misses. When you go to fanduelcom locked on, that's fanduelcom locked on to learn more. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about yes. What Graham Mertz loved doing in Wisconsin that he's probably going to love doing in Gainesville that is going to improve the passing attack from last year because it's something that I know personally I was throwing fits about this last year that I wanted to see this happen. We didn't see it happen that much, but throwing to the running backs because here's the thing. I understand running the football is fantastic. That's the way to do things in the SEC. And when you have Montreal Johnson, when you have Trevor Etienne, and you can run the ball consistently, that's great. I also understand that the name of the game in modern football, get the ball to your playmakers in space. Okay? If that's, hey, whoever is in at running back, run a swing. And when I throw it to you, you're going to have, let's say, that let's assume that they're in some kind of zone. You're probably just going to have to outrun a linebacker chasing you. And then you're going to have a one-on-one with a corner. And a lot of corners are scared of that kind of contact when you got a freight train coming down your way. So there's that. But Graham Arts did love utilizing backs a ton at Wisconsin. I say backs because Wisconsin did use fullbacks, and he threw to them as well. He threw to two fullbacks last year. So Graham Mertz did like running, did like throwing to the running backs, which is a big positive, I think. Now, I, I, that's one of those things where I think when you throw to a running back, easy completion most of the time, and you're probably going to get at least some yards after contact, so and yards after catch as well. So not a downside, right? The downside is probably that there's not a ton of huge plays that come from checking it down to a running back because there's also 11 defenders past the line of scrimmage that can then come down and make a play. But I'll, I'll take a dub. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take a few yards. I'll take a four-yard, five-yard gain, and we'll say, hey, guess what? This is just basically an extension of our running game. Good luck. Like, yeah, now we run the ball and we throw to our running backs. Because there were certain times last year where the running backs, they weren't really covered a ton because that wasn't what Anthony Richardson did. And that's a fair thing. That's, like I said, with throwing the tight ends. Anthony Richardson loved throwing to receivers. That's fine. But at the same time, your efficiency numbers would probably look a bit better if you threw to tight ends, if you threw to running backs. And that's the name of the game here. Like, you don't bring in Graham Mertz to go, oh, we're going full air raid. We're throwing the ball deep all the time. Like, you bring in Graham Mertz and you're going, okay, we're going to try to just improve our efficiency. And that's fine because efficiency wins games also. So that's fine. But Graham Mertz loved throwing to running backs. Both Trevor Etienne and Montreal Johnson made the most of their very, very limited opportunities as pass catchers last season. I know most of us probably remember that one play specifically where Anthony Richardson started rolling to the right, and he was rolling. It was, I think it was fourth down, and he was rolling to his right, and he was about to get hit, and he just like flipped it real quick to Montreal Johnson, and Montreal Johnson picked up the first down and then some. And I know that a lot of us probably remember that because we should because it was an awesome play. And a lot of us probably saw that and they were like, oh, Montreal showing he can contribute as a pass catcher. That's awesome. Maybe he'll get to do that more. Mm -mm. That's not what happened. But they did both make the most of their very limited opportunities last season. But something or someone that didn't make the most of those opportunities last season was Naquan Wright. He's no longer in Gainesville. You know who is in Gainesville now, though? Cameron Carroll from Too Late. And Cameron Carroll... He kind of specializes as a pass-catching running back. So he is going to be involved in the running game. And I know I've spoken about this with John Garcia before, where we talk about why wasn't Naquan used in the running game, in the passing game? 
Why wasn't Trevor Etienne using the passing game more? Why isn't Montreal Johnson using the passing game more? And we've come to the conclusion that we think the most likely result was they just didn't like using them in the passing game. They didn't have the running backs that they wanted to throw to. But you brought in Cameron Carroll, and that's his specialty. You brought in someone who's meant to do that. You ha- you now have a running back that you're going to like to throw to. So Cameron Carroll is going to have a role, and Graham Mertz is probably going to love having him to throw the football to. So Cameron Carroll's involvement in this passing game, you're likely going to improve the, efi- the efficiency. The yards create less third and longs where you have to throw the ball deep and, and just help this offense improve in the passing game, which it desperately needs to improve in 2023 because you're not going to have that running threat from Anthony Richardson. So that's how I think this team can fix this passing game, improve this passing game, whatever you want to say, but just in improving your passing attack is crucial for the Florida Gators in 2023. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. Also, thank you all so much. I feel like I've been getting so many more like positive comments in recent weeks, um, and, and it does feel awesome to get those. So thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators football. For your second listen, check out Lockdown College Basketball, hosted by Isaac Shade and Andy Patton, where they are dudes. Like, like they do one hell of a job covering college basketball and they definitely helped me make money by giving me their actual insight and i'm like oh, okay so i'm gonna take this bet got it cool thanks for lockdown gators i'm brandon olson don't forget to follow me on twitter at wns underscore brandon find my written work with whole nine sports giants country and nfl 33 and i will see you all tomorrow